Hello, my name is Chris Molnar and I'm the curriculum chair for the Porter and Chester HVAC program. I'd like to take an opportunity to welcome you to the program as well as welcome back our returning students to the October 2018 term. There's a few bits of information that I would like to review with you real quick that's going to help you progress and succeed in the program. I also do want to highlight a few important changes to the program for our returning students. Our program is designed to help you succeed in the field following your graduation. Success for most employers is based on work habits, which include timeliness, attendance, appearance, completion of the jobs they assign you on time and under budget. You do have to know when to ask for help even when you're in the field. And we want you to do it right the first time. These are all critical things that a future employer is going to want to make sure you have the skills for so they can succeed in their business, which is to service their customers and in the end make money. They also want to see that you have a basic knowledge that can be used as a building block as you proceed through your career. You're not going to know everything coming out of school, but we are trying to build the basics in so that you can expand on it as your career progresses. You have to have the ability to research information that you do not know. Okay, you may know the basic parts of a furnace or air conditioning system, but as newer technology comes out, you're going to stumble across things that you don't know right off the bat. And it's very important that you have the ability to find that information. So when we look at why we do things at Porter and Chester, it all ties back to what the employers consider a successful potential employee or technician, okay? When we take a look at work habits, timeliness was one of them we talked about. Hey, it's our attendance policy. Attendance, do you show up for work every day? Okay, that's tied into our attendance policy. Appearance, that's our uniform policy and our dress code. Completion of jobs on time and under budget. This has a lot to do with our lab due dates and our grading policy on our labs. We'll talk more about that. You have to know when to ask for help, time limits, and your instructor's there to help you. I had an employer once tell me that if I spent over 30 minutes trying to figure something out, it was time to ask for help. Keep that in mind. Doing it right the first time. Okay, that's why we have assignment due dates. That's why we have lab grading. And that's why we have exams, both practical and book. The knowledge portion, the basic knowledge that can be used as a building block. That's why we do our homework. That's why we have required reading. That's why there's classroom activities and lectures. That's why we do quizzes. We have to make sure you have the basic knowledge in the HVAC industry that can be used as a building block moving forward. Part of success is also the ability to research information you do not know. Several times through every term, you're going to be asked to go research something related to our career, related to HVAC, and we call it learning resource research. And I'll go more, I'll point out where you can find some information on that in a minute. So overall, when we look at the HVAC program, the HVAC program is 1,284 hours in total. It's made up of 12 courses of 107 hours of instruction per course. Each course is roughly 60 hours of classroom instruction, okay, it might also happen in the lab, and each course has roughly 47 hours of supervised labs, which you're going to have lab projects to do every day. Remember, sometimes instruction happens in the lab or shop, okay, your instructor may take you into the shop and say, gather around, I want to show you something. That's instruction, and we're giving you, we're giving you important information that you're going to have to eventually use in the field. You do have homework and outside of classwork. Roughly 26 and 3 quarters hours per course is our estimated homework and outside of classwork time. So just keep that in mind, plan for it. Our program is split, in, split into spokes. We consider that a wheel. While the courses are the, all the same, the spokes may vary a bit between the day and the evening programs because of the hours per day and the number of days per week. Day classes attend five days a week for 12 months. 
evening classes attends four day a week for 18 months. So when we look at the day wheel, spoke one consists of electrical for gas, mechanical for gas, and trade skills. Spoke two consists of electrical for oil, mechanical for oil, hydronic and control systems. And then spoke three is core refrigeration, advanced refrigeration, and piping principles. Please note that the green for core refrigeration and the darker print for advanced refrigeration. That's a prerequisite. You have to pass core refrigeration in order to move on and take advanced refrigeration. If you do not pass core refrigeration, you will not be allowed to take advanced refrigeration until you come back and take core refrigeration. Spoke four is core air conditioning, advanced air conditioning, and design principles. And again, you have to pass core air conditioning before you can take advanced air conditioning. In the evening, the wheel is actually six spokes because it's an 18 month program. We do electrical and mechanical for gas, then we do electrical for, and mechanical for oil, then we do core refrigeration and advanced refrigeration. And again, core refrigeration is a prerequisite for advanced refrigeration. And spoke four, we do core air conditioning and advanced air conditioning. Again, prerequisite is the core air conditioning. And then spoke five, we do trade skills and then hydronic and control systems. Spoke six, we do piping principles and design principles. And again, the evening program is 18 months, day program is 12. Now let's talk a little bit about grading because that's important to everybody, okay? The Institute employs a grading system based on 100%. In the career HVAC program, which is the program you are sitting in, the percentages are 90 to 100%, which is a 3.5 to a 4.0 GPA. That's excellent. You're really doing well in that percentile. 80 to 89, which is the 2.75 to 3.45. You're passing, it's good, you're doing good work and you're keeping up and you're doing what we expect you to do. 75 to 79 is a 2.0 to 2.7 GPA, that's satisfactory, and below 75, you it is a failure, okay? So basically what I'm trying to get across here is you absolutely have to pass every course with a 75%. We do not have a passing grade below 75 in the HVAC program anymore. That is a change from last term it was announced in April. 40% of your grade is the exams. That's the average of all written and practical exams given through the term. 20% of your grade of your grade is labs. Okay, that's lab and shop activity throughout the term. 20% is a quiz average. Okay, that's based on instruction. Your quizzes are based on instruction and homework throughout the course. 20% of your grades is homework, all written homework assignments throughout the course. So when you're taking a look at your grades, pretty much everything is split straight across um, with the exception of exams as a 20% and your exams are 40%. Please do not miss any one of these categories. So if you decide not to do your homework, well, there's another problem which we'll talk about in a minute, but you have to get a 75% to pass this course. So it does matter. As the material covered in assigned homework and labs are building blocks along with the lecture towards the objectives of the course, all homework and labs must be submitted in order to take the final exams. You will not be allowed to take your hands-on practical and written examinations until all homework and labs are submitted. Please do them on time because, they're, because we have a grade loss for late work. Quizzes must be taken in class and on the date and time scheduled. Missed quizzes may not be made up and will receive a grade of a zero. Late homework and labs are not acceptable. All homework and labs not turned in on time will have a grade loss of 10 points per day. So any if it's not turned in within 10 days of it being late, it's a zero. Okay, and you will not be able to take your final or practical exams. 
Our class schedule is easy. 7.15 to 12.45 p.m. is our daytime hours. Midday is 12.45 to 6.15. Evening is 6.15 to 10.55. You'll have two 15-minute breaks every day at a time decided by your instructor. And if there's any change to these schedules based on campus activities, your instructor will give you a heads up and what your instructor says as a schedule does override what is on this PowerPoint. These breaks may not be combined into one 30-minute break. Attendance will be taken at the start of the day. Attendance may be taken after each break. Attendance may be taken at the end of the day. Again, this is all based on your instructor. They have to take attendance at the start, and any time you leave early, come back from break late, or come into the day late, that is deducted from your classroom attendance. Please read the attendance policy and I'll show you where it's at and ask your instructor if you have any questions. While your instructor may not deviate from the policy, they are here to help you understand and follow it. If you have something come up, I can't stress enough. Talk to your instructor. If you need to talk to your instructor privately, just ask them to talk to your instructor that you need to talk to them privately. The attendance policy can be found at the top of the first screen in Moodle, and I will show you where that's at before we're done. Please make sure you read the section on missed and makeup exams in your course syllabus. It's really important. I want you to understand in advance what is expected. There is a 10 points per day grade loss will occur for all missed exams, labs, and homework. So please watch your due dates. So a question that comes up frequently is regarding state licensing once you graduate. So once you complete your program, okay, in Connecticut, student graduates are required to complete an apprenticeship and then take a license exam. Upon completion of the HVAC program at PCI, you will have your 720 hours of related instruction required by the state. This is dependent on passing every course with a minimum of 75%. The state does not recognize and hasn't for a couple years it's been in the syllabi that they do not recognize any course that is passed with under a 75%. It's very important. If you're a returning student, if had had that issue, please talk to your instructors if this is a concern for you. You'll also receive on-the-job training hours for any shop time at PCI. The number of hours is decided by the state of Connecticut, not by Porter and Chester Institute. A heads up, the state does ask for your attendance records and they will deduct hour for hour the time you have missed based on your attendance at PCI. So it behooves you for your future on-the-job training to be here for all the classes in all the shops. Our, our program as taught in all states is based on the Connecticut S2 licensing requirements as that is the highest standard for all regions we have campuses in. The Connecticut licensing standards meets all the requirements of any other state we teach in. For Massachusetts, upon completion of the oil term, the students are able to take the Massachusetts Oil Burner Technician's License. Please see your instructor for directions when you're ready. Upon completion of the program and the following the apprenticeship, Massachusetts graduates may also qualify to take the re refrigeration license exam. Again, please keep in contact with your instructor and when you're ready to take that exam, we will help, we will give you the required paperwork from the school. In Massachusetts, graduates may work on any air, con air conditioning and refrigeration systems under 10 tons in size while employed by a licensed insured contractor without testing for a license. Graduates may work on all gas and electric furnaces and boilers. No, you can't do gas piping or venting without a license while employed by a licensed contractor. It's very important to realize oil equipment requires an oil license for any work and refrigeration and air conditioning over 10 tons in size requires a license. Both states require special license for sheet metal work 
going beyond basic repairs and extensions and replacements. The PCI program is not a sheet metal program. We do not qualify, we do not get you ready for the sheet metal license in Connecticut, which is the SM2. We do not get you ready for the sheet metal license in Massachusetts. That requires a lot of additional sheet metal and other coursework to go along with the HVAC. So let's quickly skip over and I want to show you a few things in, in our LMS, which is Moodle. Okay, so as I pointed out, the first page of Moodle, your attendance policy is up here at the top. You'll be able to find it when you log in. You're going to do, um, you have an Office 365 subscription. He, there's directions for new students how to register for Office 365, which is gives you free versions of Word, Excel, and all the uh, Microsoft Office tools for both the iPad and for any, up to I think two machines at other machines. So if you have a computer at home that you're running an old version of Word or have kids that might need some, need newer versions, please register for Office 365 and use it. It's a benefit of being a student, okay? Registering for the student portal. The student portal, as your instructors may have already talked to you about, is where you're gonna get your final grades once they're entered. That is the official grading platform. Okay, no grades are final. There's grades that show here in Moodle, but they are not final until they're on the student portal. So go ahead and make sure you register for that. Okay, and then as you scroll down here, you will see a ProQuest link. ProQuest is a research database and it has all the most recent trade journals in it as well. So when you go in here to ProQuest, your instructors will show you how to do it. And if not, I'll make sure they have a link for a video that's available for that. You've already used your student app codes and your vital source book order link. So that is all available to you on the front page of Moodle. So again, I really want to welcome you to the HVAC program. That's why we're here. Um, and please let us know if there's any questions. Your first line of questions is your instructor. Then you will have your um, campus director of education and operations, your CDOE, and they can always find answers and if needed, get in touch with me. And please make sure you read the attendance policy and always read your course syllabi before you, at the start of the course. So have a great term and we hope to see you all back in January as well, with the exception of those of you graduating. Thank you.